I'm Trace Barnett and welcome to Garden Party. Today, I'm gonna show you what to do with an overabundance of zucchini. It's a really tasty recipe too that's gonna take us on a little world tour. So today we're gonna make zucchini tikka masala. That sounds so good in an Alabama accent, huh? So first things first, let's start with zucchini. Again, I have picked zucchini that is not massive, still soft skin to the touch and rather small. I want zucchinis that are like one portion for one person. Take your zucchini and I'm going to remove both ends and I'm gonna slice it right down the middle. You're gonna need four small to medium sized zucchinis for this recipe. Just think of one person eating this whole half and repeat the process. Zucchini is one of those things that's like if you find yourself gardening at the end of summer, you know, you also sneak up onto people's porches and drop off all your zucchini. So once we have halved our zucchini here, and this is my favorite way to do zucchini, whether I'm making it tikka masala style or not, I'm simply gonna take my knife and I'm going to score it just like that. It doesn't have to be perfect at all, but I'm just really opening up that zucchini there to soak up the goodness of the flavors we're about to pour on top of it. It's also gonna really help it to release a lot of that residual water. And then it's also going to help it brown up really nice and pretty for us. So it looks good on the plate too. So I'm just going to lightly salt this just to pull out some of that residual moisture. And I'm just gonna sit this here in front of us and let some of that water come out while we prep the rest of our ingredients. So you're gonna need one and a half to two pounds of chicken breast cut up here. And I know we're only using the breast, but I prefer to use a whole chicken versus buying it skinless, boneless, all of that. You're gonna be able to make chicken broth from this. Of course, I love a little bit of dark meat chicken. It's just a little moister than breast. So buying a chicken that's whole is a little bit cheaper and it's also gonna give you a lot more kitchen use versus just a breast. So if you're cutting up a chicken, you should just take it and just follow the natural lines of the chicken. So follow the back, cut that off. Follow the natural lines of how the chicken's wings come through and just cut that off. I'm also gonna pull the skin off here because we don't really need that for our tikka masala. Now I would reserve this skin and throw this in the pot with our chicken carcass later because that's gonna make some really good broth that we can can up and use for soups stews or whatever we might be cooking later. Use a good sharp knife for this. And again, just follow the natural lines of the chicken, just kind of cutting that breast away from the bone. So after you've removed your chicken, I'm just gonna cut this chicken breast up just into strips or chunks, just depending on your preference here. Just smaller, thin strips, because that's really gonna impart a lot of good flavor and sauce right onto our zucchini. So now that we have our chicken in a medium bowl, I'm going to just cut up a few cloves of garlic. You can always throw in a little more garlic if you're trying to save yourself from vampires or if you just like to have stinky breath or both, really. Throw that in there. And then I'm going to put a fourth a cup of yogurt. I'm going to give that a little stir. What this is gonna do is this is gonna really flavor our chicken. It's also gonna tenderize it and it's gonna brown it up really nice for us too when we add it to our pan. So to our chicken yogurt mixture, I wanna add just a little bit more acid. So I'm gonna add three tablespoons of lime juice. And I've simply just taken my limes and gave them a good forceful smush down. If you have a microwave, it's also great to pop those in the microwave, especially if they're a little hard to make them extra juicy. I'm using my favorite juicer here. It reminds me a lot of people in my life. Um, really nostalgic when I'm juicing limes here. And the limes really make this. So tikka masala is an Indian dish and it really makes the flavors of everything just marry together. You just really need that tart lime juice here. These are really juicy limes too. I always just imagine everyone's head that I'm crushing this lime on top of. It's really sweet and wholesome. And you need roughly probably two and a half, three limes to equal three tablespoons. I'm also a person who just loves citrus, so feel free to add as much as you need there. 
and pour that right in the chicken and give that a good stir. That's gonna help tenderize the chicken too and it's just gonna melt in your mouth after it's cooked. I'm gonna let this just hang out while we're prepping the rest of our dish and we'll come back to that over by the stove. Let's put that cluck over and forget about it. So after our zucchini has set for a brief moment, I'm just gonna take my, just a clean rag here. You can also use paper towels if you're a consumer um, and just pat those dry and remove any of that excess liquid. In our spices here, I have coriander, cumin, cardamom, smoked paprika, and just the aromatics from the amount of these spices alone just makes me wanna dive in and just play around in these spices, just the best thing. To that, I'm going to add little grated fresh ginger, just a tablespoon or so, not a ton, but I really love fresh ginger flavor. Fun fact is you can actually take these ginger roots, pop them in the garden, and they will grow. They're gonna shoot up all these really nice, pretty ginger fronds, and you can actually use those to flavor dishes and also use it as a garnish with a little bit of ginger flavor. Let's get just a little bit more there. I'm gonna add those and use those shortly when we start cooking up our masala. You need one Vidalia onion, so that's gonna be our really good southern flavor there. So now that we have our Vidalia onion roughly chopped, let's head on over to the stove and cook those down somewhat. I really love Indian cuisine in general. So Indian cuisine and Southern cuisine both have an emphasis on fresh ingredients. You know, ingredients that are just plucked right out of the garden. Also, I love that they're, for the most part, really kind of spice heavy. Uh, they're really uh, flavor forward and using herbs. And of course, that savory, sweet flavor is a really big component of Southern Appalachian dishes too. So they kind of fuse really well together. So now comes the time that we brown up our zucchini. I've preheated the oven to 450 degrees, and I'm about to place our scored zucchini in a cast iron skillet, any kind of skillet of your choice, and I just have a general oil in here, just a vegetable oil. You don't want to use olive oil or anything like that. And I'm just going to drop our zucchini directly in there. Now, you want to cook your zucchini face side down for the entirety of the cooking process. Really, you're all. So make sure all of your zucchini is face side down and making contact with the skillet itself. After about five minutes, let's take a look at our zucchini. And that is the perfect golden brown that we are looking for. And I'm gonna resist the urge to turn it over. And I'm gonna pop it in a 450 degree oven and I'm just gonna let that finish cooking off for about 10 to 15 minutes. The mode of cooking zucchini like we cooked it for the tikka masala, you know, you score it and then you brown it on top, which gives you almost like a browned crust, which kind of holds in the creamy zucchini without it soaking everything up and being soggy. So, you know, a simple way to do that would just be to like crush up feta and herbs and you can throw on some fresh tomato on top of that to just kind of re-envision that zucchini. So it doesn't necessarily have to be tikka masala. That zucchini boat, in a sense, is the vessel that can transport you to any kind of zucchini dish that you really want, especially when you have 300 of them in your garden at any given point in time. So after we pop our zucchini in the oven, I'm just heating five tablespoons of butter up and we're gonna brown our onions and make our tikka masala sauce. So I'll add our Vidalia onion into our heated butter. A quick tip here, whenever you're throwing onions into heated oil or heated butter, Always make your pot wait on you versus you waiting on it. Don't throw your onions into a pot that's insufficiently warm. What that's gonna do is it's gonna pull a lot of water out of your onions and it's gonna make it a little bit soupy. We want to throw those in there so they kind of brown and caramelize. We wanna hear that sizzle. So I cook these onions down roughly three to four minutes, five minutes occasionally, just until they're translucent and a little bit golden. To that, I'm going to add our wonderful spice mixture here. I'm just gonna go ahead and smell it. So again, we have coriander, cardamom, cumin, smoked paprika, and a little bit of ginger. 
It looks like a lot, but we really want all those spices. And if you're probably wondering on the amounts of spices, why don't you go ahead and click below on the link, which will take you to the recipe, and you can see all the measurements there. Of course, you can always alter the measurements to your taste buds. I'm gonna give that a good stir until it toasts up just slightly, and it kind of marries together, and all of the onions are really coated. It's also gonna make it have a really pretty color. I'm gonna add in some of our canned tomatoes. You need about a 15 ounce can of tomatoes. I'm gonna add in two tablespoons of tomato paste. And the tomato paste is really going to cook down and make this sauce extra rich for us. Give that a good stir just to combine everything well. And now I'm gonna add one of my favorite things to cook with in the kitchen. That's a little bit of heavy cream. Roughly three-fourths a cup of heavy cream. And now I'm just gonna add in a tablespoon of brown sugar. The brown sugar is just gonna act like a binder, add a little bit of sweetness to our recipe here. And it's just gonna kind of amalgamate everything together. We want a good, rich, bubbly sauce so it really grabs onto the chicken and our zucchinis. You want to bring this to a bowl. And then once it's to a bowl, we're gonna reduce that to simmer and we're just gonna let that simmer away until everything is perfectly married together and our chicken is ready to join in into this bath of masala. So while our sauce is simmering away over here, now's the time to cook the chicken. And I have heated some olive oil up in a pan and I'm gonna transfer our chicken in the yogurt mixture directly into the pan. Go big or go home. Just spoon the chicken out in an even layer in the skillet and cook just until it's browned. So it looks like our zucchini is almost done while the rest of our dish cooks up here. So I'm gonna remove it from the heat, sit it to the side and allow it to cool before we assemble. I'm gonna transfer our chicken here into our masala sauce. and I'm gonna give that a good stir. So now comes the final addition to our masala sauce, and that is chickpeas. So you read roughly 16 ounces of chickpeas, and whenever you are adding any kind of bean, chickpea, or legume, I would suggest that you start out with dried beans, legumes, and cook those yourself rather than just pouring them out of a can. Because when they come out of the can, they already have a mushy texture anyway, so we really want that full flavor bite from the chickpeas. So now that we have everything stirred up, cooked up, so now let's plate up. Let's add this to our zucchini and get our munch on. So now that our tikka masala is all cooked and ready to go, now it's time to plate it up over our zucchini. Take your zucchini boat that's taken us over across the ocean without leaving our kitchen. Plop that down. I'm gonna do two because I'm a little bit hungry. Throw two zucchinis on there. This is another good thing too. You could plate this with basmati rice, whatever your taste buds are screaming at the moment. And just simply take that tikka masala sauce and do a generous helping directly on to that zucchini. I'm gonna go ahead and top that with a little, or maybe a lot of cilantro. I'm a cilantro lover here. And then why not a couple slices of fresh lime too, just so we remember that it's in there. And now comes the fun part, the taste test. Mm. Such a good Southern fusion of a dish that you don't really expect stateside and especially in Alabama. It's also an escape from the boring zucchini dishes that I think we're all used to. This makes me wanna plant even more zucchini so I can come up with some creative ways to cook with it. So happy zucchini and traveling and cooking unless you're chained to the stove like me. You can escape through food. Mm, it's really good. Nothing like a creamy zucchini. Just almost sliced my finger off doing that one. That was like a real awkward too, did you see? <laughs> did I look at you again? Oh my gosh, I just can't take my eyes off. Insert flavor phrase here. Oh, 
cute. You're yes. just so cute. I'll look over here. Excuse me. I'm gonna remove this chicken carcass. <laughs> Struggle. Okay.